Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason. KM4ACK. Is a $30 lithium iron phosphate battery worth having? Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. All right, so a bit of a spoiler alert here, but for those guys that uh, just kind of want the short answer and don't want to watch the entire video, yes, buy this battery. There's a link to it down in the description below. For everybody else, let's take a few minutes and talk about this. Now, for roughly the past two years, I have been running the Dakota Lithium uh, 10 amp hour battery pack with my radio setups and it has been a fantastic battery but that battery is going to run you roughly a hundred bucks for that 10 amp hours now more recently I picked up one by bio Eno, a little bitty three amp hour battery and I bought it for another project that I'm working on again though that battery set me back 50 bucks so when I stumbled across a battery uh, that's a lithium iron phosphate, it's rated at 8 amp hours, and it only costs 30 bucks, guys, I had to grab one and run it through a few tests. Let's jump over to the workbench, and let me give you a little bit of information on this, and then we'll get to those test results. Okay, so here's a closer look at the battery, and I have no idea how to pronounce uh, that name brand, so not even going to try that. But it is an 8 amp hour battery. Let's take a quick look at it. It looks like it's 3.5 inches across this direction. If we flip it this way, it's uh, 4 inches. Uh, the sides of it is about 2. Let's see if I can straighten it up for you guys a little bit. 2 and 3 quarter inches. Uh, and then I went ahead and modified it. Uh, I've wrapped some electrical tape uh, or electrical type tape around it, but I did modify it. It just comes with a couple of the little tabs uh, on the positive and the negative, and of course, I power pole everything. So I did go ahead and modify that. And the weight of the battery comes in at just under two pounds. Now, let's see if we can give you a bit of a size comparison. I think I can get all this in frame here. This is my 10 amp hour. Uh, Dakota lithium battery. Now it does have the uh, Guinnesson charge controller on the reverse side, uh, kind of velcroed and taped to the battery, so I don't want to separate that out right now. But that gives you a little bit of a size comparison between the two batteries. So uh, that was another thing that kind of surprised me when uh, I got this one out of the box, uh, being eight amp hours and being quite a bit smaller. So anyway, I went ahead and hooked this thing up to the 891 and started running a test on it. Now for the test, what I did was I connected up uh, the 891 to the battery. I used a what's up meter uh, in between the radio and the battery so I could see how much uh, power I was able to draw off of the battery. Went ahead and fired up the Raspberry Pi and turned on JSA Call. I set JSA Call to heartbeat out every 30 minutes and it was to reply to every heartbeat that it heard and uh, give an acknowledgement to each of those heartbeats. I set the radio at 20 watts and basically I walked away. Just came back every uh, so often to check on uh, kind of where the battery was at how much power I had drawn so far, and what the voltage was uh, was still how much voltage was still remaining. And let me tell you guys, I was pleasantly surprised uh, with the radio transmitting part of the time and receiving full time. I was able to draw roughly 7.58 amp hours out of that battery, or somewhere around 94% of its rated capacity. Now, that'll change depending on how much you transmit uh, and how, versus how much you receive, how much power you're using, and things like that. Uh, the faster or the harder we hit that battery, rather, uh, then the faster it's actually going to drain and the less uh, overall capacity we will get out of it. So, if I'd have cranked up the, uh, 
the transmit power to 50 watts, I probably wouldn't have quite got uh, as good of results out of it. I might have only gotten 85% instead of uh, the 94%. Now, keep in mind, I've only owned this battery for uh, less than a week, so I can't say how it's going to do long term. What I am going to do is I am going to put a note out on my calendar. Uh, I'm going to kind of use this battery more than anything else in the field going forward uh, and then come back to you guys maybe in six months or a year and give you an update on uh, how the battery does. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and rerun the exact same test with JSA Cole uh, using that 20 watts of power and see if we're still able to get uh, the, the same capacity out of the battery after a year of use. So would I buy this battery again? Well, let's just say I went ahead and bought the 16 amp hour version as well. Uh, initial impressions off of the 8 amp hour version said yes. Uh, you're probably going to like this battery and at the price point, I just couldn't pass one up. I do think they make a couple of other versions that are available on Amazon. I believe I saw a 20 amp hour version and also a 35 amp hour version. I think the 35 amp hour version is roughly $99. Uh, I do know that the 8 uh, amp hour and the 16 amp hour come with these tab connectors. Couldn't show you that on the 8 amp hour because I had already covered them up with the electrical tape and converted those to power poles. Now I haven't gotten around to running any tests on the 16 amp hour version yet. I do hope to get that done uh, as this week goes and uh, might be might be to the uh, might take until the weekend before I can get to that, but I do plan on testing that 16 amp hour version as well. So again, I'll leave links down in the description below to these batteries so you guys can grab one as well if you'd like. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, seven three.